Hello, welcome to an overview of the new features in Aqua Data Studio version 21.0. Under Help About, you can see the current version, and then there's links to, again, the community site and then the eStore as well. So the website and documentation will be updated with new feature overviews, and we can look at some of those now. Um, but just to introduce Aqua Data Studio, it's a database IDE with some different components that, that uh, benefit different types of database professionals, right? So analysts, developers, DBAs all benefit from Aqua Data Studio. And we're up to a version 21.0. And so let's introduce uh, a number of those areas here uh, to go over in terms of this uh, introduction slideshow. So the screenshot here is just showing the, the home page and the documentation link, and then here's a list of areas that we'll introduce in this brief overview. Um, if you're an existing customer, you can download from aquafold.com in the portal link. If you're a new customer, aquafold.com has different areas to download, and you can evaluate the full version of the product. So for existing customers, you know, we're always adding new platforms. And so now we've added uh, another Azure Synapse, the data warehouse for SQL, Microsoft Azure, uh, MongoDB Atlas. We had MongoDB as a NoSQL environment. Now we've added Atlas. So you can navigate and see your collections and, and access a NoSQL environment uh, similar to other database connections in Aqua. Uh, Oracle 19 added, Postgres latest. So, and then also uh, database drivers for a number of platforms. So, um, easy connectivity is, is very important with Aqua, and so we're always adding and improving the ways you can connect to your environments that you're responsible for. And then talking to customers and adding features. This is now the third release we've had this year of Aqua Data Studio. So some exciting areas have been added in this release. Uh, data masking for masking sensitive data and being able to share those query results with users without revealing sensitive data. Being able to create random tables or random data or, or both. Right? You can create uh, empty tables, you can populate those with random data, or you can populate existing tables. So there's a random table and data generator. Um, scheduling was introduced within the past few releases for the Windows environment, and now the Mac OS has the scheduling capability. And projects are now able to be scheduled. And so projects are an advanced feature in Aqua that's, that have been there for many years. It's one of the pop-out windows we'll introduce. So we encourage users to start taking advantage of the projects and some of the Aqua scripts that are bundled with Aqua. And now you can schedule and automate uh, the execution of those projects or scripts. Um, and then uh, again, some similar every year, every release we have updates for drivers and product fi fixes, but some interesting licensing options now where you have some different economies of scale and, and promotional maintenance discounts, uh, as well as the Aqu Aqua Ultimate Edition. And so that leverages some power features, and we'll introduce uh, those here within this time period of this demonstration. Okay, so just maybe a few screenshots, and then we'll dive into these environments. So you can see I have a live connection here to... Azure Synapse and MongoDB Atlas, uh, the data masking. Here's a screenshot of the documentation, but we'll, we'll be able to look at these live. Uh, the random table gen and data generator for existing tables or creating new tables. And then scheduling both uh, for Windows or Mac. And so you have the this create schedule task and manage schedule tasks. And now for more advanced functionality, you have the, the ability to leverage Aqua scripts and projects and schedule those tasks. So we'll introduce these areas. Um, some of them have existed, but maybe a little bit embedded. And so now we're revealing some of those power features uh, that the Aqua team is now exposed in different beneficial ways. And so the licensing helps helps expose that, right? So uh, look for this to continue to evolve, um, but you have the, um, pricing tab across the top banner where you can see some different benefits of, of licensing uh, numbers where you know you have uh, options basically to, to help save money right and then power features can be licensed and some diff discount promotional pricing and aqua ultimate is something you'll you'll continue to hear more about and so uh, look for that to continue to grow and, and then you can you can manage that in different ways or, or benefit from some of the promotional end of year pricing here for aqua ultimate Okay, so we've updated the database platform list here. You can see we've added Atlas and, and uh, Synapse, and then you know, we're up to 40, we say, but there's different versions of these platforms as well. So this slide gets busier and busier, but always nice to show uh, the scope of, of platform support that Aqua continues to, to lead with. 
All right, so again, here's the Aqua Data Studio homepage, uh, but aquafold.com is the, uh, the community site. And then here's easy ways to download or to see the, the complete demonstration. We have a, a calendar schedule that you can visit and then share that with your colleagues to join a reoccurring live webcast versus a recording like this. But here's a, a resource link where you have lots of recordings and, and where we post these reoccurring webcasts. Here's a, a list of what's new in the documentation. And so I just showed that list uh, within the PowerPoint slide. And so just to let you know, there, there's, there's detailed documentation for all these areas. So just help online. You can dive into the documentation in new areas. Okay, so here I have some things set up for us, but just maybe to keep moving and keep this brief, um, I have on the left-hand side my navigation tree. And so you have these pop, pop out or dockable windows. And so many of us are probably familiar with the connection, the servers pop out, the file system pop out. But the projects are something that have been there in Aqua for many years, and we're trying to encourage users to take advantage of those a little bit more. And now with some of the functionality in Aqua Ultimate, you'll, you'll see the ability to leverage that, leverage that uh, in beneficial ways. So projects have been there. There's full documentation on those, and we'll talk about some of the scheduling capabilities with projects. But here you can see a navigation tree of a range of environments I've connected to. So I created a new group here for some of the new platforms, right? And so um, here you can see SQL Azure's warehouse, right? Which uh, uh, SQL Server and renamed Synapse. So Azure Synapse is supported now. And then MongoDB Atlas you see here. And so if I navigate into these environments, I can drill into my databases here in Synapse and I see my, my schema drill down and then see my object types, right? So user tables, views, constraints, indexes, users roles here in a, a data warehouse Synapse environment. Here, if I drill down into say MongoDB, which is NoSQL, drill into a, a, an example database here, there are collections, right? So NoSQL environments have collections versus tables. So you have that object support as you might expect in a similar way as other databases. If I click on the connection window here, you'll see the list of, of databases supported and now those new platforms listed. So mouse over and you'll see some of the hover over text and platforms. Uh, and that can be beneficial. So here with Mongo, you see Mongo and Mongo DB at Mongo Atlas, right? So um, depending on the platform, there's really you know embedded hover over. If I say hover over Postgres, for example, we added some new 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 platform support there. You can see the range of Google Postgres, AWRDS Postgres, right? So a lot of development here in this connection window, and that's continued with the new platforms that have been added. And then here at Here's some, some query tabs or query analyzer windows I have open. And so I was just executing some SQL in, in, in Synapse and in, say in, in MongoDB. And then here's the query history, which is helpful where you can always just get back to any SQL that you've been executing in different environments. So continued support and then the, the core functionality exists for those, those databases as well. So obviously executing SQL and, and retrieving data sets uh, or using some of the advanced features on the primary toolbars, right? The query analyzer, visual analytics, your modeler, the tools menu, those are all uh, enabled for these newer platforms that were added. Okay, so maybe let's keep moving here just to keep this brief. Um, so in terms of these new features, let's introduce the list here. So data masking is found under the tools menu or in a right click menu, right? And so you see tools data masking, or if I drill in or navigate to a database, I can right click and then invoke the database data masking as well. So here's an example database. I have a stockbroker database, right? So maybe I have some sensitive information here, right? Some client broker information. So here's a table, for example, I can right click and then under the tools drill down, there's data masking. And so if I invoke that, you can see the ability to set up data masking for existing tables. And here's, here's, here's a two tables that I had already set up data masking for. So here, let me just quickly remove those. And so this will be the new window for data masking for you. And then if you click configure, this is where you can, can step in and, and start hiding data result sets, right? So here, let me just query this table first, right? So I'll right click on this table and just execute a select statement and say a new window so you can see how that's done, right? So there's a select statement, can execute that, bring back my result set. So here's again, a client transaction data set, right? With client information. So here at the end, I see my broker ID, my broker commission, right? So maybe I'd like to share this data set without sharing the broker ID or broker commission. So I can easily right click on this table, tools, data masking. And then here's a wizard 
that will allow you to step through and and choose which tables and what masking you're, you're including for that table, right? So here's this client transaction table. So here's a drop down where I can put in a value or switch to no, right? So not masked would, would reveal the data. I could switch the result set to no, uh, or I could put in my own value, right? So here, let's take a look at that. So here, I'll choose the no, and for these two, two values and fields, leave the rest as it is, save that. And now I'll enable data masking, save. And now when I rerun this query, now my data is masked, right? Those values are hidden. Now, if I wanted to say export this in different ways, that data would be hidden and masked. Okay, so a helpful feature. Um, you have a, the ability to configure that in different ways. And so here, if I right click again, or under the tools menu, data masking, click your connection or what database you're, you're hiding data within. And then you have the configure, which would step you through a wizard and, and, and show you the list of tables. So you can manually configure all this here and then turn that offer on as you query against those tables. So easy to use and helpful for, for hiding certain data sets. Okay, so data masking, new to version 20.1, 21.0, and uh, enabled for, for all users uh, when you're on that version. Okay, so um, the task scheduling is now enabled for, for Mac OS and for projects, right? And then the random table and data generator uh, is also found under the tools menu. And so those, those are different areas that we can introduce or show. Um, I mentioned the projects, right? And so here are projects and the ability to schedule those. Um, here under the tools menu is the create schedule task. And so here I'm in a Windows environment. So I see create schedule task for SQL or create schedule task for AquaScript. And so AquaScripts are in your projects, right? So if you're new to projects, explore the projects. There's some bundled uh, canned scripts for you, right? So if I click on project, new project, you'll see a list of, of Java scripts, which we call Aqua scripts, where you can customize and, and set parameters for, for different areas. So random table generator, multi-server execute, schema compare. And so now here, if I was to say schedule or create a schedule task uh, in, in Windows that had existed already. So now we have this for Mac, right? So maybe we'll step through an example here. So create scheduled SQL task point to your connection, and then this would step you through a, a small wizard with a few, a few tabs here at the top. So I could say, you know, maybe I'll call this data export, step through when this is going to occur. Here's my OS credentials to schedule this, right? Since this is sitting on your machine, you need OS credentials there. And then here, for example, this could step through, maybe I'll just write a select statement here. And so you have this for both Windows or, um, Mac, right? And then um, now for projects, you have this as well. So this is this is something that existed prior. So we're just showing that we have this existing in Windows. We have it for Mac. And so you, you have the ability to email result sets if you configure some email um, in your settings. And then you can create or schedule or automate this, right? So here I just executed a SQL statement, exported the result set. So you could schedule that to happen every day at a certain time or when you're away. And now we have this for Mac as well, right? And so here for AquaScripts, this is an advanced feature that leverages projects, right? So there I just stepped through the create SQL script wizard create schedule task for AquaScript, again, would point to this bundle of scripts. And so there's some out of the box where you can configure those on your own and then point to an AquaScript that you'd like to schedule or automate. And so here maybe is a schema compare script. And again, this would step you through the wizard and allow you to set the time when that's gonna run or how often that's gonna run and, and take advantage of AquaScripts, right? So this is a JavaScript that you can customize Maybe a little bit advanced for, for newer users, but there's a lot of power in Aqua and Aqua projects and Script King can really do some heavy lifting. And so we're trying to reveal that uh, within the Aqua Ultimate uh, licensing. Okay, so scheduling um, projects, scheduling SQL on Windows or Mac uh, is, continues to be enhanced. And again, automation, saving time, 
scheduling repeatable tasks uh, continues to to increase in demand as you know we have less and less resources and more and more responsibilities okay um, so then the random table generator random table and data generator um, are interesting features if that's maybe a, a requirement for you so that's again a feature under the tools menu or the right click menu and so if I look at an existing connection I can right click there and then there's the tools and you see data masking random table data generator right so let me switch out of that investment database and here I have a healthcare database healthcare test database let me expand the tables node in this healthcare test database. And here's an example of some of the random table generator tables that I created with Aqua, right? They start with a prefix, you can customize that. But here I have a couple of tables that I created, right? With AQ underscore. Um, so you can create these, drop these very easily. Maybe I'll just drop an, a one I created earlier. So right click, drop table, very easy to do within Aqua. But of course you wanna be aware of where you're doing that. So here's, I'm down to say two tables with the AQ prefix. So let's introduce the random table generator. So right click tools, there's random table generator, saves you a click or two when you drive from the right click menu. Otherwise under tools, random table and data generator, and then Aqua will say, okay, what's the database you're working on? So let me drill into that healthcare test database that I was just showing, highlight that, say okay. And now here's the user interface for the random table and data generator. So there it already has the database that I'm connected to. And now you can start making selections here. So you can generate random tables and then here's some settings, right? So the AQ prefix, or you can change that. How many tables would you like to create? So you have minimal, minimum max, maybe I'll just bump this down to a few tables here. How many columns? And then separately is, do you want to generate data for those new tables? So you can generate data and populate those. Or if you have existing tables, you can generate data for those existing tables, right? So you have some options here to step through and explore. Um, if you're creating new tables, which I'll, I'll click right now, you'll see those populate. If you're populating existing tables, you, have, you click on this step too and point to the tables that you're populating. So you have some flexibility here, but but really helpful and nice that you don't have to leave this tool to, to be able to now populate random data. Some of this existed in projects, but now we have a nice user interface for this as well, right? So here are minimum max rows, generate a file, generate to database. And so here I can just execute that and, and that will finish for me successfully, created different tables for me, close this. And now I could say maybe refresh this or revisit this connection list uh, and and that, then I'll see those new tables created. So right click on your server connection. This is a way to refresh um, and populate um, new, new tables if you need to see them. So drill into my tables, drill down, and now I have those two existing tables. I created three more, right? And so of course you can explore those and see the, the random column names and, and then you have customizations on those as well. So helpful features, depending on your job or responsibilities, um, Aqua continues to listen to the user community and, and add these type of features to, to continue our partnership and driving uh, functionality that, that really gives you back time in your day. And so Aqua has these new features in version 21 that we're excited to introduce uh, and, and have you dump, jump into and, and try. And then um, some of the other uh, administration areas that, that can be beneficial, uh, such as licensing, right? And so maybe to close out here, we can visit the, the, some of the licensing features. Um, there's different economies of scale. And then within uh, the pricing tab here, you'll see some areas where you can explore and see where you can benefit and, and provide some savings. So um, we're always trying to help our customers and, and spread the word of, of Aqua Data Studio where um, it really gives you back time in your day, reduces errors, improves accuracy, right? And that's the theme of our productivity tool, uh, as well as the other areas that, that are exciting where you have products within a product, where you have the visual analytics, the ER modeling, and then even DBA features. So an all-in-one, a studio product, and uh, we're excited to introduce version 21.0 and um, look for the reoccurring uh, demonstrations for those starting the beginning of December. Okay, thank you everybody for joining and good luck with Aqua Data Studio, new version 21.0.